Hello and welcome to True World Crimes. You join us at the start of a brand new series and we will be starting with episode 1, Britain's Worst Mothers, Rebecca Shuttleworth. Rebecca Shuttleworth was 25 years old when she was handed an 18-year sentence for the murder of her two-year-old son Keanu Williams who was found dead in her ex-boyfriend's flat in Ward End, Birmingham with a sickening amount of injuries including a fist-sized rip on his stomach, fractured skull and bite marks. He was found with 37 different injuries altogether, some being caused by a stick of some sort. The ex, Luke Sowetherton, who was 32 at the time, was convicted of a single child cruelty offense of biting Keanu to teach him a lesson as he said. He received a nine-month suspended sentence and had to work 200 hours of unpaid work. This was another case where authorities and social workers failed to intervene and it was a cruel lesson for the Safeguarding Children Board. It is clear that professionals and different agencies involved missed a significant amount of opportunities to take action in Birmingham. This wasn't the first time in recent years serious failings happened in Birmingham City Care Agencies and we will cover some more stories from the area in future. Rebecca Shuttleworth was only 25 years old at the time of sentencing. After a trial lasting over five months, a jury convicted her of the brutal murder of her own two-year-old son. He was a defenseless child, and it was her duty to protect him. Instead, she beat him so severely that he died a lingering death from his injuries a couple of days after. Also, she was convicted of offenses of cruelty to Keanu by assaulting him on several occasions in the months leading up to his death, resulting in significant injuries. The jury found each and every one of the multiple allegations proved. You have been convicted of cruelty and neglecting Keanu in the last hours of his life by failing to summon the medical aid he so badly needed. She was also convicted of cruelty towards her older daughter in 2005 by deliberately burning her hand and wrist. Luke Sowetherton, was 32 years old. He was acquitted by the jury of any involvement in the death of Keanu, and acquitted of all allegations of child cruelty bar one occasion when you deliberately bit Keanu which Rebecca Shuttleworth instigated, supposedly as a way of teaching him not to bite when this two-year-old child had bitten him. Keanu was a delightful little boy, described as a real character, a little entertainer, who remained cheerful despite everything. Joyful was the word that more than one witness used to describe him. He was a much-loved brother, grandson, nephew and cousin. He was a favorite at nursery as well as in the family, his death left a void in many lives which will never be filled. Rebecca Shuttleworth was born to a very poor start in life with a disrupted childhood spent in and out of care. She lost her mother and grandmother within a matter of weeks when she was only 18 years old. She had never been in trouble with the police and she was said to be an intelligent young woman. She learned to be resilient and streetwise and after observation, that she was also said to be very manipulative and deceitful. She was always able to create a good impression when it was needed. She became involved in an abusive relationship with a violent man and at the age of only 16 where she gave birth to twins. Her father provided a home for them all. He took over full responsibility for the children in 2007 when the residence order was made in his favor. She left her father to look after the twins and moved to Torquay in 2007, where she attempted to make a new life for herself. She met a much older man and soon fell pregnant with Keanu who was born on 11th of December 2008. Rebecca had help and support from social services in looking after him in a structured setting for the first few months of his life. She had impressed the social workers sufficiently to pass various assessments and persuaded them that her parenting was good enough. Even then, however, there were signs of neglect and ill-treatment of Keanu particularly when she was away from the eyes of the professionals. She failed to attend appropriately to his needs and failed to wash and clean him and his clothes while persistently neglecting to change his nappy and this wasn't through a lack of practical skills. This caused him discomfort and distress. The social workers made clear the negative impact on any small child of being sworn and shouted at but she laughed it off as simply part of her character. In the summer of 2009, she returned to live in Birmingham with Keanu. 
she was able to be provided with a home and a great deal of practical support by her friend Kay Filmer and her mother Karen Selvi. They were shocked on occasions by the way she treated Keanu, failing to attend to his basic needs like nappy changing which I wonder why they didn't say something sooner. Rebecca never gave him the time and attention he needed and craved and was more interested in pursuing her own selfish interests. Despite this, Keanu relished the attention he received from Rebecca when she could be bothered to do so and there is no doubt that there was a strong bond between the two of them. That was observed by the professionals at the nursery, and on the face of it all was well. Rebecca, and Luke, were then living in a hostel in Birmingham in the wake of a painful separation from her long-term partner which necessarily limited the amount of contact Luke was able to have with his own two boys one of whom was only a few months older than Keanu. Rebecca Shuttleworth became infatuated with Luke and he in turn was surely flattered by her attention. She was the dominant personality in the relationship. But as Luke told his friend Wayne Collins, Rebecca and Keanu came as a package and was prepared to put up with him as the price of seeing more of than girlfriend, Rebecca. There is no criticism whatsoever as a father to his own boys but had double standards when it came to Keanu. He would never have dreamed of biting one of your own sons in the way he did to Keanu, even to teach him a lesson. That was the first deliberate assault inflicted on Keanu. Rebecca encouraged him to inflict the bite. Luke Sowetherton bit Keanu very hard on his bare arm, causing a nasty injury involving bruising and breaking of the skin. He surprised himself by the ferocity of the bite and expressed regret to friend Wayne Collins. Rebecca covered up what her boyfriend had done by lying at nursery and saying that Keanu had been bitten by his cousin. On 7, 2011 December, Rebecca took Keanu to hospital with a head injury that had been inflicted that day when she returned to Luke's flat after he had been babysitting for Keanu. There was a very prominent bruise to his forehead with indications of tramline markings which strongly suggested he was hit with a stick. At hospital, Rebecca misled the consultant nurse that she saw by pretending that it was a recurrence of an earlier injury the previous week and that the original injury had been caused by a fall at nursery. On 9th of December, two days later, Keanu was taken to hospital again with a series of injuries. There was a nasty burn to the sole of his foot with bruising on the upper part of the foot consistent with his foot being held by force against a hot radiator or another hot surface. On the jury's verdict, Rebecca had deliberately inflicted that injury. It is horribly reminiscent of the injury that she had inflicted nearly five years earlier on another child. Instead of seeking professional medical attention for this burn you merely put some cream on it and left Keanu to limp in pain all day until he had to go to a hospital that evening when even more serious injuries had been caused. Sometime on the 9th December, a further head injury was inflicted on Keanu, this time resulting in bruising and boggy swelling to the top of his head. There must have been a substantial blow to his head, quite probably a stick becoming concerned by the early evening and called NHS Direct to ask for advice, although just wanting some advice over the phone without having to take Keanu into hospital where all these injuries would be examined critically by medical staff and quite possibly by social services which he obviously did not want. There was also bruising to Keanu's back which was seen at the hospital on 9th December. It was a troubling injury all the doctors agreed, because of its unusual location on the child's body. She lied, suggesting that it was caused accidentally when Keanu fell against a wall in the bedroom at her father's house. It was clear she deliberately inflicted that injury and there were subsequent bruises inflicted in the same general area of Keanu's back on two further occasions, seen at nursery on 5th January and over the fatal weekend. Around Christmas or New Year Rebecca Shuttleworth, was confronted by her sister Angela regarding the handprint bruises she had inflicted on Keanu's buttocks which she discovered when she was bathing him. The sister said she was unconcerned and merely shrugged her shoulders when she told Rebecca that if she saw anything like that again she would report you to social services. It is clearly established on the medical evidence that sometime in the last week of his life, three five days before he died, Keanu received a serious blow to the right hand side of his head, hard enough to cause damage to the skull itself and extensive bruising to his scalp. It was strongly suspected that Rebecca inflicted this but no one can be sure and for this reason, 
she was not charged with this specific injury. By the jury's verdict, it was her alone, Rebecca Shuttleworth, who was responsible for the violence which led to Keanu's death. She was with Keanu in Luke Sowetherton's flat from the Friday night through to the Sunday afternoon, by which time Keanu had undoubtedly suffered his fatal injuries. She claimed that it was Luke Sowetherton who inflicted those injuries but the jury decided otherwise. Keanu would have been bound to scream inconsolably for many minutes when such injuries were inflicted. Her claim to have seen and heard nothing of any such attack and its aftermath was as unconvincing as it was dishonest. It would have been on the Saturday morning, when Luke Sowetherton was away from the flat for two hours, that she inflicted these injuries. No one could look at the photographs of Keanu taken after his death, or even the body mapping images of the multiple injuries he suffered, without being appalled at the brutality they represent. There must have been many separate blows. At least one must have been inflicted with a weapon, in all probability a pull cue or broom handle, hence the tramline bruising. There were injuries inflicted to his abdomen, his chest, his face, his head, and his back. The abdominal injury which killed him was a massive tear of the mesentery, the apron of fat that provides the blood supply for the whole of the intestine. The force required to cause such an injury was very great indeed, likened by the pathologist, Dr. Kohler, to the forces in a road traffic collision. It must have been the result of heavy punches, a stamp or kick, or other blows. The depth and extent of bruising to Keanu's back would strongly suggest he must have been thrown or slammed against the floor or a wall or another firm surface for at least part of the attack upon him. One can scarcely imagine the pain and distress Keanu must have suffered from this outburst of violence. Although he had become used to assaults, he must have been terrified. Rebecca told the police how at one stage that weekend. You saw him lying face down cold and helpless on the floor in the room where he had been sleeping. It must have been clear as soon as the violence had taken place that Keanu was badly in need of medical attention. He got worse on Saturday. It's thought that it was Keanu whom the neighbor heard crying and screaming in the early part of Saturday evening. The likelihood is that Keanu was left to cry and scream in his pushchair, as this was not uncommon, and on this occasion, the pushchair was probably taken downstairs to the hallway, between the inner and outer door so that he would be out of sight and out of mind. He got worse overnight and was very ill indeed all of the next day on Sunday. The reality is that he was dying. There was only one reason why Keanu's mother, did not summon medical help or take him to the hospital that weekend, as any normal parent would have done. She feared that this time the injuries inflicted upon him could never be explained away. Instead, took the chance that he might recover. She was buying herself time, but it was time that Keanu could not afford to lose if there was any chance of saving his life. In reality, on the medical evidence as a whole, there was not. Rebecca left the flat for the first and only time on Sunday afternoon, initially to go to the shops and later, went to her father's house. She wanted to get away from the flat and needed time to think of the explanation to give. With all evidence, the judge in Parliament had decreed that for murder such as this the starting point is 15 years. Keanu was particularly vulnerable because of his age. He was barely two years old, a defenseless child. Secondly, there was mental and physical suffering inflicted on him before death. His was a lingering death over many hours following a brutal assault by his own mother. The physical suffering was very considerable, and so must have been his mental suffering. Thirdly, this was the grossest abuse of a position of trust and being his mother and it was Rebecca's most basic and natural duty to protect him. Also, an aggravating factor is that the fatal violence that weakened was not the first time she had inflicted injury deliberately on Keanu, as we have already covered. It was the culmination of weeks of violence. That also includes the assault in 2005, although bearing in mind that she was only 16 when that offense was committed. The judge accepted that there was no intention to kill, but this was a brutal and sustained attack on a small child so the mitigation is substantially less. He accepted as well that there was a lack of premeditation in the sense that Rebecca did not plan to assault Keanu so severely that weekend. It may even have been a response to the way in which he was crying and screaming. But again, 
the mitigation is substantially less because of the history of assaults. Her age at the time was a mitigating factor, still only being 22 and having no previous convictions or cautions. Having said that, if she had been prosecuted and convicted at the time for the earlier offense she would have had a very significant previous conviction. Also bearing in mind her troubled upbringing, the domestic violence Rebecca yourself suffered from a previous partner, and the assistance provided to the police recently in connection with another distressing criminal investigation. Rebecca was given 15 years for the murder of Keanu and 3 years for the previous child abuse she caused back when she was 16, totaling 18 years with 13 days already served. Unfortunately, I could not find any details about the abuse she caused when she was 16 as Rebecca was still a child and this is mostly withheld from the public, but if anyone knows some info about that, let us all know in the comments. Luke Sowetherton was sentenced for a single offense of child cruelty. He willfully assaulted Keanu in a manner likely to cause him unnecessary suffering or injury to his health by deliberately biting him. It was accepted in the court that he did so at the instigation of Rebecca Shuttleworth and that he did so only because Keanu had bitten Luke and she suggested this was a way of teaching him a lesson. But that cannot excuse you, a grown man biting the arm of a two-year-old child hard enough to break the skin and leave a large bruise with obvious teeth marks, as the witnesses described. The judge was satisfied it was done in anger, although Luke regretted it straight away when the realization kicked in of what just happened. He admitted to the police in an interview that he had bitten Keanu but deliberately played down the seriousness of what was, frankly, a shocking injury. The judge said this when reading Luke's sentence dash. I have read the material placed before me by your counsel which confirms everything in the evidence the jury heard during the trial about the quality of your relationship with your sons, and your generally placid nature. I have been assisted by a pre-sentence report. I have also read the psychologist's report from Dr. Tim Hall, dated 9th of March 2012, from which it is evident that you are of limited intellectual ability. There is nothing, however to indicate that you were not fully in possession of your faculties at the time of the offense. You were weak and, to an extent, naive. You have endured the strain of five months on trial for murder, on top of two years waiting for the trial to begin. You have spent a total of 13 days on remand during the course of the proceedings. All those factors enable me to take a course that does not involve your going to prison today. This was, however, a serious offense. I have considered the sentencing council guideline for assaults on children and cruelty to the child. I am satisfied that your offense merits a short term of imprisonment, but for the reasons I have explained, I am able to follow the recommendation in the pre-sentence report to suspend that sentence. There will be a sentence of nine months imprisonment, suspended for a period of two years. The supervision requirement will also be for two years. In addition, you will perform 200 hours of unpaid work for the community within the next 12 months. There will also be a specified activity requirement of 30 days to undertake the victim awareness workbook in order to increase your understanding of your actions and the harm caused. It is my duty to inform you that this conviction means that you will be automatically barred from engaging in regulated activity with children or vulnerable adults pursuant to the relevant statutory provisions. Shuttleworth was arrested the same day of Keanu's death on January 11, 2011 follows calls to 999 where paramedics found Kiwi's lifeless body claiming the boy had stopped breathing, was pale and had not been well. Although fatal injuries had been inflicted on the boy up to 48 hours earlier, Shuttleworth did not seek medical help before the 999 calls was made at 7.42 p.m. on January 9. A few months before the trial, Rebecca was on national television winning £10,000 through the postcode lottery where she and her girlfriend at the time both cheered and smiled which angered family friends and the UK public. Here is a video of them receiving the cheque. This is all very technical, isn't it? it is. Kirsty. Yes. Hello. Pleasure. I'm Judy from the People's Post. Hello. This is my girlfriend and partner. Hi there, Hi. Becky. Nice to see you. Are you were expecting me today? Yes, I was here. And it's your birthday? Yes, it is. Yes. Happy birthday. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, oh god, sorry, I don't know what to say, it's amazing, it's going to change my life completely. Is it? Yeah, completely. And what are you going to spend it on? Oh, I don't have a clue. Me? I know <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a flat off anyway. Yeah. Where the area? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go on a holiday, I think. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Enjoy every single penny of it, the pair of you. Well done. And thanks for playing! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on June 25th. 2013 Rebecca was sentenced to 18 years, life imprisonment for four counts of child cruelty and one count of murder by multiple injuries through beating and internal bleeding over a period of days. She will be eligible for parole on 22nd of June 2031. So to sum up it seems as if Rebecca resented the birth of Keanu and felt he was an obstruction to living her life as she wanted. She spent much of her childhood in care as her alcoholic mother struggled to cope, giving her considerable experience of the care system. Following Keanu's birth, she received extensive support from health and social workers, posing as an attentive mother at parenting classes. Personally, I feel like she never cared and she had many times, avoided trouble and lied her way to her own son's death. To be given only 18 years with a chance of being released when she is 43 years old seems crazy. What do you guys think? Thank you and goodbye.